OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Okay, so hi everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Barry uh, Bakin, and I'm an instructional technology teacher advisor uh, for the Division of Adult and Career Education of the Los Angeles Unified School District, uh, which is a, a really nice um, position to have uh, if you're interested in technology. And I'm very grateful that the division uh, created this position, but basically it's an out of classroom uh, position, uh, working with uh, teachers uh, and administrators and, you know, all staff basically at our, our site uh, to help introduce and integrate technology uh, into instruction. So uh, I'm very grateful to have that position. And I'm also a subject matter expert for OTAN, uh, which means uh, that I get to do these presentations and uh, online and also uh, in person when that's going to resume again, hopefully uh, sometime in, uh, you know, by the end of 2021 or perhaps the beginning of 2022, no, no telling how that's going to go. But in any case, um, this presentation is called Easy Office Projects Part 1, focusing on Word uh, and PowerPoint uh, projects. Uh, so let me go ahead and talk a little bit about uh what we're going to be covering today uh this is the the standard slide about what OTAN does uh but hopefully by the end of this webinar um you as participants will be able to demonstrate to your uh ESL AB and academic students several separate projects using uh Microsoft Word or PowerPoint um and so hopefully your students will also be able to practice vocabulary grammar uh, or demonstrate mastery of content by so doing. Uh, I will say that when I first started doing um, this series, uh, I was heavily focused on uh, using the office, uh, you know, uh, applications, but uh, pretty much everything that I'll demonstrate uh, can also be done using Google Docs or slides uh, with minimal adaptation. So uh, perhaps next year when uh, I revise this, uh, we'll get into, you know, I'll just change the name as well. But in any case, let me continue. So uh, I started these projects uh, many, many, many years ago in the completely face-to-face uh, -face environment. Uh, in short, um, I was, I had a, a four-day-a-week, I'm sorry, five-day-a-week, four hours a day class uh, in a computer lab. It was an ESL class in a computer lab. Uh, and uh, as much as, you know, I, I had experience and interest in using uh, websites and other, you know, software applications, uh, like, you know, Rosetta Stone, or, uh, you know, the Oxford picture dictionary online, things like that, I couldn't uh, maintain student interest uh, for that much time only on the computer. And that's when I started uh, thinking, well, maybe let me get them involved with doing some projects. And uh, the projects uh, would be using the applications that were on all, every computer. And I felt that uh, by so doing, I could uh, not only maintain interest, but uh, doing the projects would serve a dual purpose for ESL students of not only practicing language, but also learning uh, some of the, you know, needed uh, very, very basic techniques about uh, using, you know, the office productivity uh, app. So the very first one uh, was, I just used to call about me. Uh, and very simply, uh, I would take photos of students. Uh, so as they came in the room, uh, came in the classroom at the beginning of the semester, and then uh, I would, uh, use those photos as the basis for this little, very simple project uh, where the students were to tell me a little bit about themselves. So this served several purposes uh, that I found useful, uh, not just uh, in the moment, but over the long run, uh, because I would save everything for every semester. 
And uh, what I began to collect was uh, quite an archive of uh, former student writings. Um, and so uh, that was helpful in the moment. Many times students would come into class and I couldn't quite remember their name uh, at the moment, but uh, so I could casually like, you know, at the computer uh, scroll through that semester's uh, photos and documents and, and remember the name as a little crutch. And then that also served the purpose, uh, you know, years or semesters later when I would see those same students again. And uh, many of them I was able to uh, share their very first written document uh, from ESL1 uh, with them many, many years later when they told me they were now in their GED program and getting their diploma. So that was always very, very nice. So, uh, and of course it serves the purpose of you know, you find out some information about the students. Uh, you also get a sense of uh, their writing level. And uh, if you were actually face to face with them in the classroom, I could get a sense of how they were functioning uh, in front of a computer. Um, and uh, also for, uh, you know, if you save uh, successive copies, even if you start uh, with pencil and paper uh, copies of the writing, uh, you know, you, you introduce students to the idea of writing a draft and revising, uh, revision, you know, and revision. And, um, and that was also handy when it came time for accreditation, uh, because I could, dem I had a, you know, a, 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 I was able to demonstrate uh, improvement. So in any case, that was the very first project uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the actual techniques for the application. Uh, you know, very, very basic keyboarding skills uh, and introduction to saving documents. Uh, back in the day, it was floppy disks. Uh, some of you may remember those. Uh, and, uh, you know, every other, uh, you know, uh, technique for saving documents uh, in the meantime. Uh, how much you let the student do or I let the student do was dependent on the students. Uh, or and you can make that decision for yourself, you know, whether you provide a, like a template like this and all they have to do is click on it and delete uh, certain parts of it and then replace it with their own information or whether they're going to do everything uh, from scratch. So anyway, that was the very first project. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, we're not going to go over how to do it, but uh, certainly if there are questions about it uh, later. Uh, I can certainly uh, give you some more ideas. But so, you know, as recently uh, for many, many teachers uh, as the beginning of last year, uh, you know, things went online in a hurry for everybody very, very rapidly. And, uh, you know, teachers who uh, may not have been uh, accustomed to using the learning management system all of a sudden, you know, we're faced with uh, transferring face to face projects uh, into an online uh, environment. So uh, obviously, you know, even if you're using a learning management system, you know, you could have students create the entire document, you know, on Word or on Google Docs for that matter as well, and email it to you. You know, that's certainly a possibility. But, uh, you know, with the new learning management systems that you may be using, uh, there may be other ways to adapt this project. So the learning management system that we use uh, at uh, Los Angeles Unified the School District is Schoology. This may appear familiar to, uh, to some of you. But, uh, you know, you may consider adapting the, pro the entire project uh, to something that fits your learning management style or a system. And so uh, the whole thing could be done uh, as a profile. So in, in Schoology, you know, you have an opportunity to post a pic and then uh, write a short biography uh, of yourself. And, you know, and that can be this project. Um, and so, you know, what you would want to do is, and obviously there are so many systems out there that I can't uh, just, you know, talk about them all from personal uh, knowledge, but you could, you know, see what you have and decide for yourself, uh, you know, let's do this project, but, you know, maybe instead of doing it as a Word document, maybe we can do it as a, a bio, or maybe we'll do it as part of a discussion, you know, where the teacher 
uh, would post as a discussion topic, you know, post a picture of yourself and write a few words or write a few sentences or write a paragraph uh, about yourself. And then uh, other students could comment on, on what you've posted. Uh, also, uh, you know, for those of you using, uh, you know, a, a Google Drive or other uh, application like that, um, you know, you could do it as a shared document, assign everybody a different page and, uh, you know, have this project done that way. So as in the physical classroom, uh, you also have to consider how are you going to present the instructions uh, to, your, to your students and uh, a sample. And so uh, if you're using, uh, you know, uh, like a Zoom meetings with your students, would, would that be the way that you uh, show them the instructions and show them the project or some other self, uh, some other uh, way, uh, you know, send it to them using Remind or uh, making it assi an assignment in, in your system. And again, uh, these are things that every instructor uh, has to decide based on what tools are uh, available available to them. So um, actually, before we get into the first question, let's, uh, let's see, uh, does anybody have uh, a particular question about this whole aspect of uh, deciding how to uh, present the project and whether or not to use it, um, you know, in what way to, to present it with your own students? Well, and remember that you would you would do that in the question and answer as opposed to in the chat. OK, so uh, Melinda, I'm not seeing anything in the question I'm, and answer. Are you? I'm not either. No. All right. So I Let's think go we're ahead. Good. All right. So we'll, we'll move right along. Uh, and this is uh, this was often the next project uh, that I would um, introduce in class. Um, I called it speech balloon conversations. Um, and, and basically, it's a great way uh, for students to practice uh, some vocabulary, grammar, or content uh, that you're covering in class. And for that reason, it's, it's very, very adaptable to all levels. You know, if you're doing a very beginning level class, then, you know, what you're expected what you're expecting from them uh, is minimal short sentences, uh, higher levels, uh, you know, you, you can make the, the requirements, uh, you know, for the content, uh, you know, uh, that much more complicated or complex, you know, so if you're studying, a, you know, like a present perfect, uh, then just say, you know what, in two of the speech balloons, uh, you know, I want to see some examples of present perfect, okay, or I want to see an example of a you know, some type of tag question, whatever it is that you're working on. Um, and then uh, in addition to, uh, you know, the idea of uh, working with uh, photos, uh, now uh, you're inserting uh, a, a, what uh, both Microsoft and also um, uh, documents and slides uh, referred to as call outs. So uh, a call out is a, basically a text box with a, an arrow pointing to, to uh, what we understand uh, to be the speaker uh, who uh, is saying that particular comment. So uh, let me just show you a few uh, student samples, actual student samples. Um, so uh, these are just a, a few that I called uh, over the years uh, where uh, you can see the, uh, the students grasping the idea that there's a difference between what we call a speech uh, call out or a speech balloon and a thought call out or a thought balloon. And um, I, I haven't actually uh, found out whether or not this idea that in cartoons of this type, if the thought cloud were, uh, which represents somebody speaking is actually internationally understood as a thought instead of as a speech, uh, perhaps some of you who've been in other uh, countries or, you know, 
have long time exposure to other cultures can can let us know if that's universal or if that's something that you you know also need to teach i would certainly mention it but the concept that um people uh say things that are different than what they are thinking is very very powerful and you can see from these next few examples that uh, students really get that so again uh you know this again another example of a student uh, demonstrating that what people think is different than uh, what they say. Uh, this one's, uh, I, every time I see this one, I, I think this must have come from uh, that particular student's, uh, you know, somewhere in their personal uh, history. Uh, you know, the fact that uh, the, the partner is not being truthful about uh, what it is that, or the reason why he wants to go play uh, tennis. So uh, I'm going to play one. Uh, as always, uh, students often have better better ideas or ways to improve a project uh, than originally presented by the teacher. And so, uh, for many uh, for many years, I did this project simply as a a one shot deal. Uh, one slide or one document with one slide and uh, in this particular case uh, the, the student came back with four slides uh, and what they had done was they had narrated the uh, the the, uh, the different speech balloons I thought it was really nice so uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear this um, the sound as originally recorded was quite low so you may not get all of it. I, I hope that you can hear it. Uh, and I will say that the third slide uh, does, uh, does not have any audio. Having this baby was our dream. I love you and the baby so much there. I wonder if it's my baby. So there's the kicker. Uh, you know, I wonder if it's uh, my baby. And now, as uh, as an instructor, let me just go back one on that. Uh, as an instructor, also, this would be a great time to work with that particular student uh, with the pronunciation uh, or the intonation of that particular phrase. Uh, but again, uh, this was a student uh, improvement of my original project, uh, but some certainly something that you could uh, consider. So. Uh, what I'd like to do now, though, uh, is even though I'm sure most of you are very, very familiar with inserting uh, images and uh, inserting text, uh, you may not be as familiar with uh, inserting uh, or working with the speech balloons or call outs. So I thought I would uh, interrupt the uh, presentation at this point and just do that live. So uh, let's see if we can do that. And hopefully, let me get the, uh, we'll start a new uh, presentation. On the left here, you see basically the same project in uh, as a, uh, a Google slide, but uh, for a uh, PowerPoint, we'll do that here on the right. You're just selecting a new blank presentation. And then, uh, you know, this is where uh, you may, um, you know, either use, you know, I, sometimes I just have the students start from scratch and just delete the pre-formatted sections. Uh, and the first step is inserting uh, a picture. And, you know, of course, you have an option of going to something online or not. What, uh, what I like to do uh, is have some uh, set up uh, pictures already. Sorry, let me get to the right folder. Oh, that's TDLS. We don't want to be there. That was last week. There we go. Pictures for projects. And so uh, you may want to um, discuss with students 
the idea that for this particular project, you know, pictures with a lot of uh, students or a lot of individuals or a lot of, you know, animals, uh, you know, are, are really helpful for this. I, I do try to tell students, you know, typically if you position your photo uh, in the lower part of the page, then you have room at the top and the sides uh, for uh, adding the speech balloons. But in PowerPoint, uh, you find them insert a shape and way down at the bottom, they have call outs. Okay. And, and then you have a few types. Uh, when you do that, you draw on your screen and the default call out has this blue coloring. But what's nice about that, these are, they're already text boxes. Okay. So you, all the student has to do is uh, simply type in the text box to get it to work. Uh, you can show them about resizing. Uh, you can show them about uh, changing the, the size of the font. You know, and, and then the other part is using the, uh, the yellow button to direct it to the person who's, who's speaking, okay? So let me just show that again. It's insert a shape. And then I'll, this time I'm going to select the cloud one. Okay. And, you know, changing the, uh, the color of the shape is all something that you know you want to show students uh, changing the font etc uh, or the you know the, the all sorts of things that you can do of course with the with the the call outs and so over here again uh, if you're doing this in uh, with slides it's really the same thing okay it's also the same command insert a shape and then a call out and then you have your choices. So not a, not a, a, a very difficult uh, project for most students. And again, easily adaptable, introduces some very basic techniques for uh, working uh, with either Word or uh, uh, slides or PowerPoint or Docs, uh, because you can also do this uh, as a single uh, page in, in Word as well. So, okay, so any questions about that before we continue? And you're welcome to, I hope some of you uh, on your own device uh, went ahead and, and tried to recreate that and at least get, uh, you know, one picture uh, on your, uh, you know, in a PowerPoint or in a slide and then, um, you know, created at least one call out. Barry, we don't have any questions yet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get some questions, uh, you know, during the course of the presentation, and we can always go back. Uh, so the next one, let me uh, go back and start with the uh, continue with the presentation. So the next one, um, I called photo grammar, uh, again, adaptable to all levels. Uh, again, can be done as an individual document uh, using Word or Docs. Could also be done uh, in, as a, a PowerPoint or slide. Uh, but basically, the idea is uh, you know building on uh, you know a picture is worth uh, a thousand words. We've heard that forever, uh, but uh, you know pictures can be used uh, for student uh, demonstration of uh, understanding or mastery. 
this particular project uh, that I'm showing you, uh, we were working with simple compound complex uh, sentences and also, you know, adverbs of frequency. So again, you know, you can tell the students, you know, what it is that you want to see a demonstration of. So uh, in this particular one, I wanted to see uh, if students could create, uh, you know, the different types of sentences. So the first sentence had to be a simple sentence. Second sentence had to be a compound sentence. Uh, third sentence had to be a complex sentence. And somewhere in there, in, you know, any of those sentences, uh, the, the students had to include an adverb of uh, frequency. And so, um, you know, grading depended on them having uh, all of those different elements. Uh, and, and again, you know, how you present this uh, in the face-to-face -face classroom, I, I, I used to plaster every, you know, uh, bulletin board or every wall space with uh, examples of um, student projects uh, that they had completed, you know, in, in the uh, today's world, you know, you could display those as uh, as media projects uh, or as discussions, uh, you know, in your learning management system. Uh, and uh, again, you know, perhaps they're learning, uh, you could choose to introduce a new technique, you know, either, you know, in this particular case, perhaps either making a table or columns uh, or, you know, what, whatever it is that, uh, you know, you feel would uh, make this presentation um, in this particular way uh, or this particular project, you know, it was picture on the left and, you know, sentences on the, on the right, uh, but it could also be picture on top and sentences underneath, uh, whatever is appropriate for uh, your, your students. I'm not going to go into how to do this. Uh, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but again, the key point is it's the adaptability that uh, you could use, do something like this with uh, pretty much all, all of your students. Now, uh, the next project uh, that uh, I felt was very, very uh, successful uh, had to do with uh, using clusters to diagram the topic sentence and subtopics of a paragraph. And now, the genesis for this project uh, came out of actually uh, some of our uh, PLC work, where uh, it was uh, decided upon by the by the entire uh, ESL uh, you know staff that um, at every level we would try to build students uh, up to get ready for uh, writing uh, in the highest levels. And so this was a, just an intermediate uh, low class, but uh, we started, you know, the decision, you know, was, was made to try to introduce even, you know, intermediate uh, ESL students to the concepts of diagramming and uh, pre-writing. Uh, and so uh, this was uh, using the idea of clustering uh, topics uh, and facts or supporting details. Uh, before writing. And so uh, obviously uh, many uh, teachers uh, would do this uh, on pencil and paper. Uh, and I felt, of course, that this would make a, a great project uh, having students do these diagrams uh, before writing. So uh, let's go through a few student samples as well. Uh, and again, so this is a intermediate low. And here's, here's the writing uh, that went with that. So, you know, the basic topic, how you can get good computer skills, and then you can see the, the three main subtopics at work, at home, and at school, and supporting details. And then uh, you have the actual finished writing, uh, obviously not the, not the first draft or the second draft. But again, you can certainly see that um, it follows the, the outline. But then take a look at this next one. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, you know, these projects uh, develop over time. So, you know, how to learn English uh, and the, you know, the four major uh, subgroupings 
okay? Uh, and then, um, I don't know, at, at some point I said, uh, you know what? Um, at, at, well, as the writing got longer, uh, I said to myself, you know, we have this uh, great tool, a computer where we can change the, the coloring of the text. So I suggested to students that using the, uh, they should use the colors of their subtopics and subgroupings uh, to show where they use, where that appears in the actual writing. And I, I thought that improved the project uh, significantly. And uh, again, um, you know, uh, our students have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information uh, that they want to and are able to share, uh, you know, because of their work or their own personal uh, experience. But again, this is a, you know, an intermediate uh, level student uh, with a really, really nice example of uh, the topic people with type 2 diabetes, and then a, a very beautiful, uh, you know, essay. Uh, written based on that. So I hope this is uh, giving you some, some ideas. Uh, I do want to uh, do a little bit of uh, practical uh, walkthrough of, of some, uh, some tips uh, to make this uh, project uh, work well. So let me go back to the uh, present, the live presentation. And uh, there we go, we use this one. And again, this works, uh, this also works well in uh, slides uh, as well. But um, if you notice, uh, one of the things that uh, I, well, I, I did notice uh, when students were, um, actually, let me go back and share one of those uh, documents for just a moment. Let's uh, go back to the, uh, the presentation and we'll go backwards a little bit. So I spent, a, you know, I, I noticed that students are really, you know, having difficulty with um, putting the lines in. And I could tell that they really wanted to get the lines uh, to match. See, they really like, you know, this obviously looks really, really good. Uh, you know, and, and some of the other ones not as not as good. And um, it occurred to me that, uh, and even for myself, that um, I was I was spending too much time trying to get them to line up. So here's the one of the little tips that uh, you could use. It, it it doesn't really matter where the line is in relationship to the circles, if you make use of the the order feature. So when you click on the uh, the line itself, okay, uh, you can you have this, these menu items uh, under arrange or order, bring to front, send to back, bring forward. So if the line is highlighted or is selected, and you send it to the back, you you get a perfect alignment of of the line. Same thing in uh, Google Slides, okay, same thing under arrange and order. Well, first you have to highlight something. So under arrange, order, and you know, you have the same commands, bring to front. So when the student, you know, you can just show the students, look, it doesn't really matter, you know, where it is on your in your ovals. You don't have to really try to get it to the edge. Okay. You can just be a little bit sloppy and just overrun it. And then just select arrange, order, and send to back, and you have a perfect line uh, every time. The other uh, idea uh, that I would uh, show students is once they've created their main topic, instead of doing the same, you know, insert a shape, uh, you know, and picking a shape again, you know, it was pretty easy just to, um, you know, copy. So they could copy and paste, you know, all of their, you know, all of their clusters uh, right away. And that became a little bit more efficient. 
so again, uh, these were just, uh, it was just, this project was really, really nice for helping students focus uh, on their writings. Okay, so uh, the next uh, project that I that I came up with uh, for my students uh, really dates back to the idea of grammar and sentence tense uh, transformations, um, and students demonstrating that they could um, formulate uh, correct sentences in in different tenses. So uh, basically, what you have here is um, a particular image demonstrating a, uh, you know, or describing what's in the picture. And then students uh, would label uh, the sentence that they created uh, about that picture in subsequent slides, okay? And so, uh, you know, Again, easily, easily adaptable to different uh, levels of class. Uh, ESL beginning high, you know, we were doing present continuous and simple past, but obviously higher levels could have more. So, you know, depending on how many levels they're comparing, uh, they'd have that number of slides in this sequence. So if they're only comparing present continuous in this case to simple past, each, each image would have a pair. So uh, the first would be present continuous, uh, some two sentences or three sentences or only one sentence about the picture uh, in present continuous. And then the next slide uh, would change that one, uh, change those same sentences to, uh, to the different tense. And of course, you know, you could change the, the declaration to a question, uh, all sorts of ways that you could uh, have students transform uh, the sentences. And then, you know, depending on uh, the level of your students uh, or their familiarity uh, with, you know, the applications, or it could, that could be what you want to teach as part of the application, uh, you know, changing the uh, text uh, to a different color. So, you know, the is talking, then you want to demonstrate that it's in simple past, then that becomes talked. Yeah, and so uh, this was a quite a nice little project for students to demonstrate uh, their awareness of uh, tense transformations. Uh, and, and here too, again, you have the option of adding a voiceover uh, so students could record their voice, uh, which could be real, uh, especially in this particular example, simple past, making sure that they're uh, really getting the past tense pronunciation or the pronunciation of the past tense uh, ending uh, ed and making sure that they're really enunciating that clearly. Uh, the one of the things, though, uh, that I did want to mention in terms of uh, doing that is that. Um, in, in, well, let me just uh, insert a new uh, get a new slide. Okay, so uh, when you insert a picture, okay, all right, and then in the in the next, you know, and then you maybe you insert your text box. And then you try to insert you know, another text box for the sentence. So what would often happen is when you go to make the second one, okay, and you have a new slide, uh, and then you try to, to do the same thing again, insert a picture again, 
see and then oh then you got to try to see if you can make it match you know the other one i, I found students uh were doing that quite a bit and then of course when you uh play your slideshow and go to the next one see the the picture and the words would always jump around so uh finally i i said okay i think let's work with the students and uh instead of trying to manually duplicate will you will we'll teach them a, a command uh okay so where you uh when you're doing the new slide you duplicate that particular slide see so that way if we make the first one we'll make the first one uh present continuous tense and okay so now when you do your slideshow because you've duplicated the picture okay it's a much cleaner and more attractive presentation because things don't jump around so that was the technique the extra new technique that i would uh, demonstrate to uh, students when, when doing this and it it made for much nicer uh presentations uh, so again you know some of these projects as you develop them uh, you improve them uh, you know as you work with students okay so that was the powerpoint grammar project again lots of opportunities for uh, english language uh, practice uh, when uh, working with your students in powerpoint or in uh, google slides so um, this project, um, I, I called the making coffee project, but really what it is, is uh, sequences. Um, and so the idea here is uh, making uh, a series of very clear uh, photos uh, of all uh, steps of a particular sequence, and then, uh, having the students uh, place them in the correct order. Uh, and so uh, this can involve speaking practice because this, you know, if you're doing this live uh, in, in a session, uh, in a, you know, a Zoom meeting, uh, they can tell you, they can shout out their options. Uh, we can't do that in this particular uh, webinar, but um, you could in this, at this time, uh, you know, put your suggestions uh, into the chat. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to switch to uh, the actual uh, presentation. And let me just uh, enlarge it so it's a nice big picture. And uh, one of the things that uh, maybe you are not aware of, but after you've created, you know, in the typical presentation, most people create their uh, projects uh, in normal view. But uh, this project is really meant to be done in slide sorter view. So watch what happens when I click on slide sorter. Okay, and I'm gonna decrease the, the slide the, the, a little bit so you can see all of the slides in one, uh, one shot. So, uh, what people may not know is that these uh, slides then are draggable. So you can you can drag them into the correct into any order you want. Okay. And then what I do to help the students um, identify the slides uh, is I put little labels uh, here, letter letter labels. Uh, except you may notice that even though it's a b c alphabetical order the actual um slides are not in correct sequential order so what i'd like to try to do is like is see if i can do this with you uh through either the uh, q and a or the uh chat uh perhaps Here. we can yeah, Mary, go ahead I've, I've asked i knew it was coming so i asked the question in the chat so 
Uh, everyone go ahead and use the chat. Which, which okay, of those good. should come first? Right, and I will preface this by saying we've had spirited discussions in past, um, past workshops and webinars as to the actual order. And you know those were all valid. So you, and, and again, that gives an opportunity for students to uh, express themselves about the way th they think things should be. So you do have a, go ahead, uh, take a look at the, at the pictures uh, and in the chat suggest what do you think would be the first slide? And all you have to do is actually um, type the letter of the slide. So this is this is your opportunity uh, to participate. And give us a letter in the chat. Uh, which slide do you think should go first? We have five H's. Oh, and um, you know, the other thing is um, when you um, when you type, it may be helpful. Remember, you can you can type to all the panelists or the panelists and the attendees. Uh, because if you're typing only to the panelists, other people don't see uh, what you're typing. So that could be fine as well. I just, I cannot see that. So uh, Melinda, you're saying that A H bunch of H's. A bunch of H's. Yeah. Okay, it should be first. So I'm gonna move this up to the, to the front position. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, Kim is saying hmm, I could use some coffee. Yeah, I think that was similar to my uh, intention, but you know, we don't have a final, a final order yet. Okay, let me see if I can uh, increase the, the size here just a little bit. See what happens when I, when I do it that way, we lose the bottom part of the picture. So it's got to be a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, and folks, you also have the the option uh, up in view options. You could make it instead of fit to window, you could make it a hundred percent. That makes it a little harder because you need to scroll or make your window bigger. But it is an option. Okay. Do we have uh, Melinda? Do we have a uh, uh, a consensus on this what should be the second slide yet you didn't ask so no we're oh, still sorry. on the first <laughs> <laughs> my apologies yes okay let's go ahead and type in what you think could be a second uh preferred uh image Answers are coming in. We've got C. Okay. Uh, any any variations on that? Anybody think something different? Okay. Not hearing anything. We'll put C. So it looks like we have somebody's thinking uh, about having some coffee and then going to the cabinet to uh, get some uh Ingredients. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay, and let, let's at least do one more. So the third slide, it looks like we actually have one A and then G's. Overwhelming and, and, majority say G, but we also have an A and an F. Okay, so uh, since you said overwhelming majority, we'll go with G. But again, I could very easily see how some people, you know, may pour the water in first and then, you know, put the coffee in. So that's a, definitely a legitimate disagreement. Okay. But anyway, you, you get the idea uh, that you can 
do this, do this, uh, and you know, finish the project. Obviously, I think perhaps you know, you know that one might the drinking coffee might be at the end. I think the um, I pretty much has to come before A, though, right? Because once everything's ready, you, you you turn it on and then you get your coffee made. Uh, let's see, was there? Uh, I think F obviously has to come sometime before. Uh, D looks like maybe probably should come before uh, drinking. You have to pour it into the cup, uh, turn it on. Yeah. Uh, so, and some of these here, you know, this little section here, uh, you know, what are you going to do? E, are you going to do that before? So these are all nice little, uh, obviously, you know, you, you can't put the uh, sweetener uh, or the creamer into the into the egg coffee until it's in the cup, if that's what your photo is. So uh, again, then you can go ahead and with the students, you know, play the final uh, version that everybody's accepted. So this is in itself is a, you know, a good conversation tool, uh, you know, working with the students and introducing the idea of uh, sequences and vocabulary you know, all the vocabulary words that uh, you might use, uh, you know, to describe sequencing. But, but like with so many of these projects, it's really uh, just the first step. So the, the next step uh, would be to let the students loose with this idea and uh, give them uh, some instruction, okay, uh, and say, you know what, now you go ahead and you make uh, a project. So uh, let me just get back over here to the uh, you know the student on their own. And so again, now they have a little project to do. Uh, you take pictures uh, if you want. You describe what's happening uh, in each one. And so uh, this is an actual uh, student student project uh, about uh, steps for painting uh, your nails. And then again, uh, you know, this this has implications uh, beyond just ESL and academic classrooms. Uh, if any of you um, you know are in CTE classrooms, uh, you know, actually taking pictures of you doing something or having the student take pictures of the student doing something is actually uh, pretty critical since they can't you know demonstrate it in front of you in the classroom anymore uh, they could take a video or they could uh, you know do this type of presentation at home and in fact that's what many uh, CTE teachers um, are doing uh, in in real life so uh, this one here uh, let me just uh, Run it Steps for painting your nails, Violeta Placencia, Mr. Bakin, December 2011. First, gather your nail painting products. Second, decide which color you want to use. Third, put the police remover on all cotton ball. Next, remove the old paint of your nails. Then file the tips of your nail. After that, paint. So, in any case, I'm not going to go through the whole, the whole uh, project. But you can see it was quite uh, extensive, and a lot of speaking practice uh, to do this project. Uh, and so, uh, I had really some incredible uh, projects turned in uh, to do this. Um, really it's really a quite and and you learn a lot about what skills your students have some of your students you know have some interesting hobbies that they're very happy to uh to demonstrate so anyway uh that's the sequencing uh project and um sorry there we go uh, and again, a, a very, very flexible, very adaptable. Students learn uh, some great, uh, you know, uh, ways to use some, you know, of the not only the 
uh, very basic Word, but also they move into PowerPoint uh, or Docs and uh, Slides. So if you recall at the beginning, uh, I said that participants will be able to demonstrate to their ESL, AB and academic students several separate projects using Microsoft Word and PowerPoint so their students can practice vocabulary, grammar or demonstrate mastery of content. So that brings me to the end of today's presentation.